Hi, John from Jones here and thank you for joining us. Welcome. Uh, I'm here today to talk about our dry red flight and uh, we're going to talk about each individual wine one at a time. In between each wine I'm going to pause and allow you to pause your device so that you can take your time, enjoy the wine. You don't have to rush. We're going to go on to the second wine and then the third wine. So you can do this just really at your leisure. And uh, so just take your time. Uh, what we have for our flight today is uh, three different reds. And all three of these are made with California grapes. Uh, here in Connecticut, our growing season is really pretty short. And we have serious issues with winter damage on the European type vines like many of these are. And uh, we can't grow these grapes. It's impossible. So to make these fuller bodied wines, we need to bring in the grapes from California. So these don't really have any Connecticut grapes in them, but they're made here. So uh, it's, it's, it's all done by the Jones family here. So I'm using water. You can certainly keep you on with your wine, but I always start with a little sniff, give it a good smell. In red wines, you typically get red fruits and black fruits, and you're going to see the difference. We're going to have some of each in, in some of these wines. So as you're smelling, look for different uh, fruit flavors, not grape flavors. And then when you take your taste, I take a first taste just to clear out my palate. Then I'm going to go for a real taste. where I move the wine all around my mouth, get it to touch the cheeks, the back of my throat, and then swallow. And that, you'll activate the other flavor uh, receptors, the taste receptors that you have in your mouth, besides just your taste buds. And so after tasting this, uh, I start thinking about what am I tasting. Now this wine is made with uh, Sangiovese, Zinfandel, and uh, just a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon. And uh, the, this skews toward the red fruits. You start getting some red cherries, some red plums, and some black fruits also. Uh, the black currant comes popping in and black cherries. So you get a little, a little variety in this one here. And uh, it's a wine that has been one of the first wines that were made here in the Jones property uh, many, many years ago. And you can notice it's got our heritage label. And that helps you know that it's uh, one of the original wines. And it's, uh, it's great with the things that are on your uh, tasting sheet. But also try this wine with burgers. Try it with a steak. Uh, really works well with uh, with those sorts of things. So uh, take your time. All these reds uh, could get some use a good bit of air. So give them a couple of good swirls, and you'll see as it's in the glass, it'll actually develop even more. So take your time, enjoy, and uh, we'll meet you back here for the next one. Welcome back. Wine number two is uh, fairly new. It's uh, only been produced a, a couple of times, really. And this one's called Red Orchid. Again, California product. This one's got Petite Syrah, Zinfandel, and a little bit of Malbec. And uh, again, that, we bring the grapes in and process them here. And this is definitely going to have some more of the red fruits. You're going to see some, uh, some cherries and some raspberry. So look for that. But one thing you're going to see as we go climb the ladder on these wines is a little bit more tannin. And tannin is not something you taste. You really, it's a sensation, a tactile sensation. And tannin is a compound that comes from seeds and stems and skins in oak aging, as all of these get. And what that does is it, it, it can dry out your mouth. It actually binds with the proteins in your saliva. And after you swallow, it, it dries out your mouth a bit. And that's where the cheese and the other food comes in. So my advice for, for these wines, the next two, uh, taste the wines then have a piece of cheese and then taste the wine again and you're going to see how the cheese will coat your mouth and it'll actually smooth out the wines and uh, you'll, you'll see a difference you can almost sometimes perceive it as a different wine so give it the smell you can look for those red fruits you might get some toasty smells from the oak barrel and you'll get that at the, on the finish of the wine and then as you taste remember swirl it around your mouth and then start thinking of some of those other fruits and uh, and then again, this is where I start thinking of the foods. What, what would I have it with? And again, you know, anything like this, this would be great with barbecue, things with a barbecue sauce, uh, ribs, uh, those sorts of things, a little bit of brisket. Uh, great with, with steaks, uh, pork. Uh, try it with meatloaf. My wife makes a great meatloaf, and this is a good, uh, a good accompaniment for it. But uh, as I said, give it some air. These are bigger reds, and you might notice that tannic grip, so have that cheese ready for yourself and uh, enjoy. Welcome back. 
Now we're going to try the third wine, which is Merlot. And uh, we do grow Merlot here. It grows here in Connecticut. Uh, but again, the European vines, and this is from the, the European species, the vinifera species, and uh, they sometimes get a lot of winter damage. So it, it's not something that we can always count on, but we do grow it and it gets used in many of our blends and, uh, and some of our other wines. But this one is mostly Merlot with a little dash, maybe about 10% of Cabernet Sauvignon that comes from uh, California. And uh, again, this one you're going to see the black fruits pop up again. So look for uh, black currants, uh, uh, blackberry, those sorts of flavors and, and smells. And uh, uh, it, so that means for me, I think of heartier food. And again, give this one lots of air, uh, as, as you did before with the other ones, because they do open up a little bit better with uh, the more aeration they get and the longer they've been open. And so this is, uh, again, aged in oak, so you will get some of that little bit of tannic uh, tug on your tongue. So again, try it and then have some cheese. So if you give it the smells and the, the sniffs, uh, you might, again, notice that black cherry, black currant uh, pop up. And, and that's often the case for, for Merlot. And since this is predominantly Merlot, that'll come. Same on the taste. When you do the taste, And you'll see the flavors echo the aromas that you got before. And again, you can feel that it's a little bit heavier. And uh, as it, you take the time, you can keep seeing the flavors develop. And again, you think about the foods that you would have. And, and with a wine like this, I certainly would try this with a steak for sure. Uh, some of the things that I have with the other one, I'd suggest with the, uh, the barbecue. But you could also have this with a, a really a hearty roast chicken. Uh, you can uh, try it with a pork dish. Uh, just cheeses, those sorts of things, and uh, it really makes a great match for that. But have that something to eat with it, because it really it can open the wine up. You can even get more flavors when you try it, or pair it up with a, with something else. So uh, enjoy the rest of the flight there. Enjoy the wine, and uh, thank you for supporting your local farmers. And uh, come back and see us again. Cheers.